is up everyone cold case project back again and today we are going to discuss the unsolved missing persons case of lisa stebick i want to dedicate a whole video to her because if you're hearing the details i'm about to outline in this video you will kind of see why i feel this is a case that is the definition of one that just got thrown off to the side and never got the attention that it truly deserved. Now, is you, if you look at this first picture, you're going to think to yourself, maybe, am I trying to sell you real estate? And no, I am not. I uh, actually came across this because a news article that was published a couple months ago stated that this home in Plainfield, Illinois, was being up for sale. Now, being a resident of this area, I thought to myself, oh, wow, that's the same exact house of uh, where Lisa Stebick was last known to be alive. And I was right. I was right. Uh, Lisa Stebick's husband, Craig Stebick, is putting this home up for sale. You will see him later in this video. I am making 100% sure that he is being, a picture of him is being shared in this video. And on the nitty gritty, let's talk about this case. If you like the content I'm sharing, throw me a like. Throw me a subscription. I try to throw videos out every single day if I can. Give me a comment and give me your thoughts on this case. All right. All that said, let's dive right in. Now, at the time of her disappearance, Lisa Stebbick was 37 years old. Okay. So, Lisa, this uh, report, by the way, is brought to you by the Charlie Project. I want to give them the proper credit as that is who I am sharing the information of this case from. Lisa was reported missing by a neighbor on May the 1st, 2007. She was last seen on April the 30th at her home in the third in the 1300 block of Red Star Drive in Plainfield, Illinois. At the time of her disappearance, she resided with her two children and her husband, Craig Stebbick. He stated he last saw her at 6 p.m. She normally worked out each evening at Plainfield North High School, and he believed she got a ride there. Lisa took her purse and cell phone with her when she went missing. But there's been no activity on her phone or credit card since her disappearance. She, she left her vehicle behind in her garage, and she's never been heard from again. Craig had filed for divorce several months before Lisa's disappearance. But the couple continued to live together. Lisa's friends said she was looking forward to starting a new life without her husband. Craig stated that although they lived in the same house, he and Lisa had led separate lives and rarely spoke to one another. On the day of her disappearance, she mailed her attorney a petition asking for Craig to be ordered out of their residence. She called him unnecessarily relentless, cruel, inconsiderate, domineering, verbally abusive, and she said his behavior was detrimental of their children. The couple may have been having financial problems as well. Their home was mortgaged for more than it was worth, and Craig had just been laid off from his job. Lisa's friends said she was afraid of her husband, and she was attending counseling sessions at a center for battered women. They'd been married for 14 years prior to her disappearance. The police were called to their home in 2006 because of a verbal dispute between Lisa and Craig, but apparently no violence had occurred and no arrests were made. Craig had been convicted of felony weapons charges in the 1990s, but no violent offenses. In the days following Lisa's disappearance, investigators searched the Stebbick residence multiple times and also confiscated the couple's two vehicles and a tarp found Inside one of the via, inside of one of them, some media outlets reported Lisa's blood was found on a tarp, but police have not confirmed this. 
Two months after Lisa's disappearance, Craig was officially named a person of interest in her case. Authorities stated he refused to cooperate with the investigation or allow his children to be interviewed. The day after he was named a person of interest, Craig asked the court to dismiss the divorce petition against Lisa. Poli police stated they do not believe, believe that Lisa left on her own accord, had an accident, or was forcibly abducted. But they do believe that she came to harm. A grand jury convened to investigate Lisa's disappearance in November of 2007. Her two children, who were 10 and 12 at the time of the disappearance, were called to testify. No charges have been filed against Craig in relation to his wife's disappearance, but he was arrested for assault in an unrelated case in November of 2009. He allegedly threatened a neighbor. Lisa is from Park Ridge, Illinois. She graduated from Libertyville High School and attended Southern Illinois University before transferring to Kendall College, where she obtained a degree in hotel and restaurant management. She was employed as a food assistant at Lincoln Elementary School at the time of her disappearance. It's uncharacteristic for her to abandon her children or to leave without warning. She did not have any health issues or mental problems at the time of her that she had gone missing. Foul play is suspected in her case, and her case still remains unsolved. Now, there you have it. In a nutshell, this is the case now. Uh, the person you see right here entering his pickup truck is Craig Stebeck. As you have heard, he, for the most part, refuses to talk to authorities. He kept his children from speaking at the time of her disappearance. And for the most part, the minute Lisa had gone missing, started to go on to living the life of a single man, a... Uh, one fact that's not mentioned in here is during the investigation, during a lot of the news outlets coming to his house, he actually invited Amy Jacobson, a uh, news anchor at the time, to come to his house. And there was actual footage of both of them hanging out at his pool, at their pool, Partying like it's the summer and he's just having a big party. Now, that said, the two of them did go on to date, I believe, for a, uh, for a brief time. And, I mean, like I said, this, is, uh, this was a case that really got a bunch of media attention this summer of 2007. Now... Why I said this is so unfortunate is shortly after, like I said, this case happened right at the end of April, essentially the beginning of May. In the end of September of that, of 2007, that same exact year, if you're familiar with the case, is when Stacy Peterson went missing and her abusive husband, police officer, uh, Bolingbrook police officer Drew Peterson, was the prime suspect, as well as he would eventually be charged with the murder of his second wife, Kathleen Salvio. This is a case I definitely plan on covering as well, too, is just all the implications. And not to mention, I live within a 20-minute vicinity of both of these houses. See, the Stebbick and Peterson households are, le are about 20 minutes away from each other. So being in that Chicago and vicinity, the Peterson case, when that came out and you have a police officer involved in the murder of his wife and you just had so much just drama involved in this case, it definitely took, it, it definitely pushed the Stubbick case down and it really just kind of pushed it out of the way. And Really, it never got the same momentum since. Now, with all that said, with all that said, I just wanted to make sure that if anybody got any sort of just justice they deserve, it is Lisa. Um, is I've already told you, 
this woman was attending battered woman conferences. She just wanted to go on with her life from the horrible man that she married. And unfortunately, she never got to see the chance to do so. So with all that said, like I said, as of 2021, the house is up for sale. And Craig still to this day is not saying a single word. So let's just cross our fingers and hope that one day he gets brought to justice for what happened to Lisa. And all that said, let's give Lisa a moment of silence right now. All right, everyone. Well, thank you for tuning in uh, today. Once again, you got a comment on this case, got a theory, please throw it down below. I will comment back. I will give you my thoughts as well. And I will be back very shortly with another video. Take care, everybody.